Hi guys, welcome to Daily Watch Talks 150. It's, uh, it feels like a kind of celebration, but we're not doing anything, no champagne this morning. But it is 150 episodes. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go for another 150. Blow out the candles. With you guys. Uh, yeah. Today we focus on uh, two watches, two novelties. <coughs> One is, is a very novel watch launched uh, last week. The Norcane Wild One. Yeah. We're going to dive into everything regarding that special watch. And we have the Boulevard uh, Park Meter. Parking. Parking Meter. It's not a park meter. Um, it's constantly. parking. Yeah, constantly you it's, say it's park. It's in my mind. Yeah, I know, meter, I know. But it's, it's a parking meter. But you like, you like my mom. I called her when, when we arrived uh, back in Denmark yesterday. And she goes, how was the wedding? I was like, it was a 50th birthday, mom. So was it a great wedding? Because in her mind, it was a wedding. No matter how many times I told her, like I told you yesterday, it's a parking meter. Yeah. And now you go park. No, it's a parking meter. Yes. <laughs> it's actually a replica of a New York parking meter. Yes. From, from 1973. 90s. Yeah. Well, if you can, you kick off with it because you want me to start. You, you wore it already. Yes, I did actually. Yeah. It was. I've been wearing it for about a week, um, and uh, this is a quartz movement inside of this watch. So. The weight is, is, is quite surprising, but it's not only the watch that does it. See, I'm reversing my review on this one right now because the strap is oddly comfortable and soft. Uh, it's like a glove almost. You know, you know when, when, you, when you try to wear in a, a brand new watch with a leather strap, it takes a while. Mm -hmm. You know, you have new shoes on, it takes a while to, you know, walk them soft if you like. This is soft as a glove, and I know that because I bought gloves in Florence yesterday, and they were as soft as this wonderful strap. See, I know if you are young, you do not know what a parking meter is, uh, but we're going to share a, a picture of it right here. <laughs> you probably have a parking app. Yes, it has the same purpose. No, it, it has the same purpose as the app you have today. Back then, you know, in New York and other places around the world, you have to put coins into the parking meter. And then, you know, it would, that would be a, a little indicator. Goo! So you, could, you have to put coins back in in two hours. Of course, your watch wouldn't remind you unless, of course, you could wind the, the inner uh, bezel to two hours. And then you knew, OK, I have to go back. So a little bit like a diver's uh, uh, turning vessel as well. Uh, this model, of course, is super funky because it looks pretty much like the original from 1973. However, as I said, it's a quartz movement inside. It has a, a AM PM indicator and, of course, a bull-like chronograph start and stop as a normal chronograph. But, you know, what? the first time I worked with it, I started pushing the, the reset button because that's normally the one that you would use this finger for. Kind of weird, but also super fun. That takes five seconds. What is the button underneath? This one. Yeah. This one turns the inner vessel. So you say you park your you park your car. Yeah. And you know you have to go back in two hours or something like that. So this sets the parking meter, if you like, for your indications. Ah, okay. That, that, that is really what I remind. What reminds me of the old parking meter. It yeah. has this kind of winding thing as well. Yeah. You, you wind it up in... as as many coins, and then you wind it up and goes. Burr, you know, two hours. It comes up with this little indicator. And then when that takes out, boom, you have to put in, put in coins again. So this one, the lower crown, which is not a screw down crown, mind you, uh, it just indicates how, how many hours is left of your parking. So just a nice little reminder, as well as a, a 12 and 24 hour indicator. So you know if you have parked your car at night or in the morning. So really nice, extremely comfortable due to this butter soft leather strap, which is somewhat padded on both sides. What do you think? I like it. Actually, I'm, I'm, I will wear one myself because okay. I really, I, I, you know, I like odd watches. Yeah, uh, that is odd. And this is odd. And, and uh, price wise, it's, uh, it's a great watch. It's around 650 euros. Yeah, yeah. And the good thing is, by the way, um, it's going to be in our shop in the Daily Watch shop, dailywatch.co. Yeah. We have a limited supply yeah. of uh, parking meters. Yeah. So if you are of our age and you have some nostalgic feel about the old park meter where you wind it 
uh, and you see it on every street corner. Or parking basically meter. On every parking meter, on every parking spot where you park your, your car. car. Yeah, now you could use the park. <laughs> okay. Park. Where you park your car. Okay. Okay, well, park your activities now and go to <laughs> dailywatch.co. Yeah. Even though you're not on farts like we are, yeah. even though if you're a youngster, this is just a great and funky watch that it fits very well into that wave of retro design, if you like. Uh, and that, you know, that somewhat cushion shape of the watch, the, the turtle, yeah. tonneau, uh, soft, uh, soft shape of the, of the watch. So, not, sorry, not cushion, but uh, tonneau. Uh, the turtle shape. It's it's really cool, and I like the you know the the pushes, the bull yep, pushes. The bull because pushes. that's like a, you know when you had a pocket watch, uh, a, a chronograph, where you just push on the top. So you have everything on the top. So yeah, as as you are doing right now, actually you're holding it in your hand. It feels natural. It feels natural for a yeah. stopwatch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now it comes that's in a nice box as well. Everything is inside. Yeah, let's have you know, it it flips out like a Leica. Well, that just flips out when you take out the box, which is nice. I like those little details. Limited edition. 5,000 pieces. You've got this little plug that sits in here. Bulova is good with that, with the presentation boxes. They don't take up too much space, but they have this little plug. Yeah. You know, with uh, a lot of the uh, heritage and oh, historic it says pieces. Parking meter. So oh, yes, it does say I'll keep parking the box meter. open, then it yes. reminds me every time I have to show it to someone. Yeah. I show the parking meter. Yes, sir. Okay. We're going to, uh, let's say, the main course of today. Okay. Uh, last week uh, was in uh, Tiamat. What a beautiful place. A beautiful place. Yes. Uh, one of the, the, the skiing areas in, um, uh, in, it, in Switzerland, Switzerland, close to the border with Italy. We've been there before, but in the past few years, it has become uh, a bit of the spiritual birth ground of uh, Norkane. Yeah. Norcane is a brand, as you know, we, we, we dearly love the brand. We're following the journey of Ben and his, uh, his uh, successful Daniel team. Daniel and Brian. Bra yeah, exactly, yeah, from, from, uh, from day one, which is yeah. 2018. They're four years old. And I must say, um, I'm getting more and more impressed by what they do. Yeah. They impressed us already in 2019, when they still had uh, a limited collection of watches, by getting the right doors because they had to know in the united states siddiqui in dubai Siddiqui, they, they were that's quite impressive for yeah. a young brand yeah. of course they have uh, the right networks that 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 usually helps mm. in 2020 they came with the kennedy movement yeah uh, which was also quite a big step for such a small company yeah because it's it's weird when when you think about bell and ross is also partially owned by chanel yeah and chanel partially owned uh, you know they they have a part of kennessy so i would have thought that bell and ross would use kennessy movements before norcane yeah but i think ben and his team they have this energy that reminds me of another gentleman of the industry mr jean claude biver mr jean claude biver who happened to be in Tiamat yes. as well because now we're actually in stage three of what impresses by the young brand of Norcane, yeah. except from also having 165 retail points right now and two boutiques. One of them, the first, is in Samat, of course. Yeah. Uh, and last week we were there for the occasion, you probably have seen it on, uh, on social media somewhere, the Wild One. And the Wild One is a watch that is all about innovation. The young brand of Norcane, they come up with an innovative way um, uh, of, of case design and shock absorbing. Yeah. So what is unique about the wild one is that it has a propriety developed uh, case material. Yeah. It's called Nortec. <coughs> Nortec is basically a uh, an, 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 an variation on, uh, on carbon, carbon fiber. It's six times as light as steel, three and a half times as light as um, titanium. And basically what it is, the, 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 the case has two components, an upper component, that's the front, and a component underneath, and they're connected, in between is rubber. So what you see I think here, you need to show that exploding image yeah, yeah, yeah. right here. Yeah, sure, that, that's what we're going to do. Exactly. So the rubber component is, is in between, and that has a, a, a shock absorbing effect. So it's not only super light and super... Uh, uh, durable, a heart, but it's also shock absorbing. It reminded me when I first heard of it uh, half a year ago uh, uh, about the, the, the shock absorber from IWC. 
which is of course sure, sure, sure. In yeah, yeah, the price range. yeah 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 um, another element that is maybe should, also should we test it yeah we can test it did, oh. you, hear, did you hear that yeah oh land right on the glass no as ed Maylong would say after i drop his tubal young not a scratch not a scratch Good work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Another element that's interesting about Nortec is that they developed the option to give color to yeah. the case design. So the North the wild one comes immediately right now in uh, four versions. This is the keiki, with um, where the, the the case is mostly blackish, but with a little touch of green. There is a red burgundy red one. There is a blue one. And there is a special edition, 500 pieces, with Dean Schneider. Yeah, Dean Schneider and his logo uh, is on the dial. Yeah. It's a very black version, whereas the logo, though, is, is white. And Dean Schneider is uh, <coughs> uh, managing uh, a wildlife uh, reservoir in, uh, in South Africa. Yeah. He's walking and sleeping and playing with lions. Yeah. Um, and he is, an, he is a friend of the brand, and they, they do a limited edition as well. But he seems to have the same energy as Ben. You know, they're just high in life. And, and the reason why I also mentioned uh, Jean, Jean-Claude Bivet is because I remember the early days uh, when he uh, took over Hublot in uh, yeah. 2005. Yeah. You know, I was sitting with him in, in Basel. He was so proud about the Big Bang. And he would turn his screen to prove the numbers. And I remember because we worked with Ben and his team yeah. very early on. Yeah. And he'd yeah. be showing me this app yeah. with yeah. sales of today. Yeah. And just after they opened at Samat Boutique, they were selling watches. We're like, while we were having a meeting, we just sold four watches. I'm like, that's a lot of watches. But here's the thing about opening a boutique in a ski resort, if you like. Now, I've been there, and you've been there several times. That's a Patek Philippe store. There's a Rolex store. There's a Bukova. There's a lot of watches there. Of course, you can't get anything at the Rolex, nor the Patek. But you can walk again to Nokia and have a drink at the bar. And the cool thing about a watch from there, I think that when you go to places like Samat, which is one of the skiing resorts that most Swiss people attend. Yeah. Also in the summertime, because you can do beautiful walks there, is you walk in there and you want to bring back a great memory of Samad. And you buy yourself a watch. So it's like a postcard on your wrist. And the fun thing is, if you walk in the streets, <coughs> you walk through all the boutiques next to uh, Norcane. is the Breitling boutique. Yeah. There's also an Hublot boutique. Yeah. And many of those boutiques, they have one screen with a Zermatt limited edition of, of some of their watches or any of their watches. Yeah, of yeah, course, yeah. that illustrates what you're saying. Yeah. That's your souvenir, your, yeah. your, your card to, to show the good time you yeah. had in, in Zermatt. But the good thing is I also had the opportunity to sit with Ben and with Jean-Claude Biver yeah. uh, and discuss the whole journey. And uh, Jean-Claude Biver is not a part owner of the company or is not in the board or something, he is a, a special advisor. I think he's in the advisory board. Yeah. He is in the board. In the advisory board. Yeah, yeah. And he triggered Ben to make speed with innovation. Uh -huh. So Ben asked him, of course, okay, Jean-Claude, what do we need to do? What, what, what would you advise? And Mr. Biver's uh, answer was, you need to innovate. You need to come up with something that's groundbreaking. Make sure that people will not compare you on price, but compare you on the innovation that you bring. And that was basically the start of developing Nortec and ultimately developing the wild one um, as, as the new line of watches. It's not a new thing that the Norcane logo uh, is featured on the dial, but the way they did it here in a somewhat of a double layer with a lasered uh, finely skeletonized pattern of the logo on the dial of the white one is is quite fascinating. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't go to Samat with, uh, with Nick and Eric. Uh, I was somewhere else. And so this is the first time I see it live. We saw a prototype in May. Yeah. And we knew there was going to be a big event on the 22nd in Samat. Uh, but I, I, I don't recall being that fascinated about the dial as I am now. Yeah. Maybe it's the light. I, I, I don't know. But it's this really, really cool piece. When is it out at the retailers? It's out in the retailers next week, Thursday. 
So what so, date is that? Today's uh, Tuesday. Uh, I forgot, but it 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 was exactly two weeks after the launch event. So, the so around October first. That's October first, second. Something like that's, that. Uh, yeah. That's my birthday. So. Uh, uh, yeah. Then so the price is around what five thousand. The price is four thousand five hundred Swiss francs. Okay. For the three unlimited versions, uh -huh. and the Dean Schneider one is a bit more expensive, around five thousand. Yeah. Um, and there, uh, uh, um, uh, an amount of the proceeds will go to the wildlife uh, uh, preservation. So you also. But this yep. is very suitable also be because if you think about uh, if you are a Norkana, so to speak, you like the outdoorsy life. Yeah. You know, you like skiing, mountain climbing, diving, walking. You need a lightweight watch. Like Nadal wears a Richard Mill when he's playing tennis. Yeah. You don't notice a lot of watch on your wrist. And I think if you go backpacking, you don't want to carry heavy stuff. If you go uh, mountain climbing, you don't want to carry anything that holds you down. Yeah. Uh, this is super nice on the wrist. Of course, the rubber strap is is very comfortable, and I think this, in terms of straps, Norkin has exploded in quality, and with the textures of the straps, yep. it's just really super nice. They it has a, a lot textile of strap, yeah. uh, uh, structure, but it is uh, an old ra uh, rubber strap. Cultural I think the Dean Schneider strap is is even softer. That is, the, the, I like Indeed? that even better. Yeah, that's yeah. different to, to compare to the three huh. regular ones. Huh. So it is, but they they are they're doing a great job. And what I appreciate about the strategy of Norcane, um, if you look at it, it's it's quite unique what Ben and his team are doing, because when he started uh, uh, sharing his thoughts on Norcane, talking to the Schneider family, talking to other uh, um, uh, insiders in the watch industry, mm -hmm. they first of all all said, you shouldn't do it. You're crazy if you start a watch brand. That's basically what everyone who starts a watch brand will, will get as a feedback. Yes. But then, uh, the, on second thought, many said, well, you should go in a higher segment. You should go into 20,000 Swiss French watches. Then you go in, in, in the top pack. You go in the high end uh, um, and do limited numbers, but at higher prices, that might be more easy in the current market. But I like, then I like how you say might be because there's no there's no security course, in this market of course, of course. Or this industry. And right now it's tough. I mean, if we were talking market analysis right now, yeah, it's a little lower than it was the last time we talked about that. No, that's true. But Ben chose to enter a highly competitive segment yeah. where it's yeah. really, really challenging, e yeah. even in the good times, three to five, yeah. to, uh, to build your brand, three to five, two to five thousand Swiss francs. Mm. And even with this innovative watch, which could have maybe positioned a bit higher in terms yeah. of price, yeah. he chose to, be, to remain affordable because his dream is not to, be, to put on the wrist of uh, a small group of elite watch connoisseurs. He wants to put his watches on the wrist many people and ice hockey players um another thing about norkin is some of the if you talk about the independent one and two yeah the independent 19 the independent 20 they were uh, limited editions to around 200 pieces yeah and they came out with a uh, independent skeleton and they sold out like crazy and ben was kind of apologetic you know i was like I, i'm sorry for the retailers they were asking for so many more but we only did 200. Yeah. so he has success with what he does of course he has his core collection you need your core collection in order to make daily sales true sure. but the, the limited editions are out this one is not a limited edition it's a new edition it's a new iteration of a great collection called the independent so this one's called the wild one uh inspired of course by the life lived in South Africa among lions and other wild animals. So he's a bit of a, y a young version of Mike Horn, uh, somehow. Yeah. Dean Schneider. Yeah. Yeah. I've never met him. I've never no, had the privilege. Met you he, met him. He was there. Yeah. And so he's a he-man. He's a he-man. He's larger than us. Yeah. And yeah. I think his his level of energy is almost on par with Mr. Biver's level of energy. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a, he is really. Yeah, he's really uh, energetic. By the way, talking Mike Horn. Yeah. I was at the Panerai Boutique in uh, Florence yes, two days ago. Yes, you were. <laughs> it was huge. You know, it's it's facing the Ormo. It's beautiful. It was the first time uh, my girlfriend Lisbeth was, was in Fidenza's house. Okay. I was showing okay. at the premises. Yeah. And uh, 
when I was there in, in 18, I think, it was a tiny little store, but now it was huge. And I came in there and I was looking at some of the old pieces which turned out to come from the Panerai family. And I thought, oh, what a nice museum. Because like, no, 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 no. Please, Mr. Hagen, let's go upstairs. So they had this wonderful museum, restored, uh, refurbished museum upstairs. And I, I was in shock when I entered it because that's a life-size waxed figure of Giuseppe Panerai, the, the guy who that's invented it. And it was so lifelike, you know, he was, you know, in the corner and, and you couldn't really go in there. And then the, the very nice uh, store manager goes like, Christian, would you like a picture with Giuseppe? So like, of course. But it was also kind of creepy, you know, because it, it was so lifelike. It was like when you go to the Madame Tussauds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, you know, holding his shoulder. I'm like, so oh, how are you doing? Yeah. But was it the same? Well, it was the same location. The yeah, same. It's yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. It's just yeah. opposite Duomo. It's yeah. it's a, it's yeah. a incredibly uh, amazing location, which I think uh, is where the Panerai family started. They didn't just retail Panerai watches, though. No, no, but, no. Uh, but you know, back in 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 the, in the early 30s. Uh, but they came up with the first, of course, the first prototype in 1936. And then we know the story of the Italian naval divers. But again, my girlfriend, she asked me, what other great Italian watch brands are there? And the, other, the, the only one I could come to think of was Anonimo and somewhat Bulgari. Bulgari is still Italian, even though it's owned by Elvema. Yeah, it has Italian roots and yeah, it Italian does. vibes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that, uh, of course, there are a few smaller boutique kind of brands. You you boat? Yes. Yes. I went on, on uh, Ponte Vecchio, oh, however you pronounce that. Ponte Vecchio. That thing. And there's still the boutique? And the... There's still a boutique. There's a Vacheron boutique, there's a Rolex retail, there's a Patek Root retailer. I mean, the watch brands are just taking over everything. Samat as well. We have once had a great uh, trip with a uh, U-boat. That's, uh, By the way, it's a long time ago. I'm just telling our photographer Patricio that his brother Eric, who's not here today, so I can say this behind his back, He's back. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Took an amazing photo overviewing Samat. Yeah. And he said, <coughs> this is probably the most beautiful town I've ever been to. Yeah. And his picture actually looked like a postcard. Yeah. And when you stand, the funny thing is, I was there with another watch brand some years ago, and I had this beautiful room with a balcony. Yeah. And right in front of me, where I was supposed to see uh, the Matterhorn, was a big chimney. But I think that's quite unusual because no matter where you are in Sermat, you can see the matter on. Yeah, that's a, that's a pity. I was, we were in a very good hotel, yeah. uh, thanks to Norking, but my balcony was not facing uh, the mat on. Complain to Ben. I think, yeah, yeah. well, actually he put me on, a, on an e-bike the day later to yeah. do a, a, a great tour when we went to the, to the feet, uh, what do you call it? The, the, the ground of the Matterhorn, yeah. where you start climbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a great tour. So wow. I had my share of, uh, of energy and, and nature in, uh, in Zermatt. It was really cool. And the weather was nice. And the weather was beautiful. Ah, be better. God, I yeah. saw the pictures. Yeah. I was, because we had the craziest weather in Tuscany. I mean, yeah, it, good. It, it came down like crazy. Oh, okay. So much rain okay. and thunder. Okay. Anyway, good. So uh, we're running out of time. We have a Patek on the table, but that's for another time. Uh, Is it? That was just the one I wore when I went yeah, to Florence. Yeah, I'm just yeah. joking. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that was basically uh, episode 150. We will soon get back to you because we are still preparing a, a, a Parmigiani yes. uh, uh, um, dedicated podcast. Which also actually with that name sounds like an Italian watch brand, but it's not. It's not. It's from Fleurier, Switzerland. But more of that next week. Yeah. Thanks for listening and watching. And uh, please share with us your thoughts, your comments especially on Norcane and Boulevard this week. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks Bye. for tuning in.